And now, without further ado, we have uh, Irina Tsuskerman, editor-in-chief of The Washington Outsider, coming in to let us know more about the situation that's going on in the Middle East. Now, Iran. We do know that the Netherlands has closed its embassy there. Germany is calling for everyone to leave the country. We have Austria suspending flights and U.S. beefing up its forces in the Middle East. And we also just heard that Israel has announced a public order for crowds to disperse. At this point, is a war inevitable? Well, there is a the war. Thank you so much, first of all, for inviting me here. Uh, the war is already ongoing. 60,000 Israelis have been evacuated for the north uh, for months and have not been able to return home. Just yesterday, Hezbollah uh, may, uh, launched a barrage of over 40 rockets uh, once again. Um, is it the most that it could do? Yes, it could always escalate more. But I would say that the war is pretty much has been ongoing the entire war. Yes, you could. it could always expand. There are always more things that can happen. But uh, it's not a peaceful situation as it is. Moreover, today, uh, Iranians reportedly hijacked uh, an Israeli-linked ship belonging to a very wealthy and well-known uh, personality named Al Ofer. He's a major real estate, energy, technology, and shipping magnate. He's got a huge stake um, in oil and gas deliveries across the region. His ship was passing through the Strait of Hormuz when it was hijacked. And many believe that this incident was unprecedented. The wall of Israeli linked ships have been attacked in the past. The, the fact that uh, this ship belonging to this particular very influential personality being hijacked despite US and European defensive operations in the region uh, can lead to a major uh, to a more increased uh, disruption in the shipping, a uh, higher jump in energy costs that has happened already as a result of Houthi attacks, and could lead to a, a great expansion and a more direct confrontation between Israel and Iran. And some believe that this incident was part of the retaliation for the, uh, for the liquidation of the RGC commanders in Syria, and more can, uh, can happen in the future. Right, and you were talking about these uh, hijackings of uh, high-profile uh, uh, Israelis, even under uh, the protection of U.S., the U.K., and I'm wondering if these are provocations, and if so, what are they trying to achieve? Well, uh, Iran has been pushing the envelope in the region, and this is not the first time. In fact, what has led to the assassination of Qasem Soleimani, finally, uh, a couple of years ago, was precisely a round of similar attacks and hijack hijackings all around the region from the Aramco attack that was attributed to Houthis but was actually launched from Iran to the attacks on various vessels and hijackings of ships. Uh, finally, Soleimani was liquidated and that put an end to, uh, to these attacks. They even included the taking down of a U.S. drone. This time around, Iran, too, seems to be intent in pushing, in using the conflict between Israel and Hamas to push the U.S. out of the region. In fact, the U.S. strengthened and broadened its presence, but it has not actually gone after the sort of targets that would make a huge difference, which is why uh, the attacks continued. It has not attacked Houthi leadership. It has not uh, attacked any serious military targets in Iran. It certainly has not gone after any RGC commanders. Uh, so it's been a, a growing back and forth, but Iran ha is looking to establish a more serious naval uh, presence to a kind of control maritime security, block off strategic uh, points, and essentially uh, minimize uh, US presence and credibility and ability to protect uh, the shipping lanes. All right, and my question also is how likely do you think that this war might spill over to uh, and involve other countries? As we see, multiple nations have been pulling out their personnel or closing their embassies for fear of a strike, especially, of course, the United States have been beefing up their presence in that area. Do you think we might see uh, any sort of conflict, not just between uh, Iran and Israel, but involving any other countries? Well, Iran has already attacked other countries. It has actually targeted a ship off the coast of India in the Indian Ocean, and the conflict has already expanded there. And India, it resulted in India uh, sending uh, multiple uh, warships into um, 
out to protect not only its own but other security interests, there is a possibility that Iran, Houthis, and Somali pirates could uh, triangulate, they could join forces to attack other ships and countries. Uh, but at the same time, some of these concerns are a little bit uh, uh, fueled by uh, by the announcement of, from the U.S. intelligence that allegedly Iran is planning a swarm of drones to attack Israel directly and that uh, the, the, the conflict could uh, end up um, taking uh, uh, harming embassies and uh, interests inside Israel, but that is actually highly unlikely. In fact, Iranian representatives said that they are going to take their time with formulating the response. Iran is much more likely to hit soft targets well outside Israel, uh, embassies in different countries, military outposts in places like Eritrea, or even ships, but not, uh, uh, but not things that could uh, cause Iran, Israel to retaliate against them directly, as Israel w w threatened to do, because they do not actually want a direct military confrontation. They are perfectly willing to operate through proxies and to target specific uh, things and even uh, uh, ships belonging to other countries in a way that will not lead to an existential threat to their own regime and survival. All right, like you mentioned, they might not want a direct confrontation militarily, and they do not want anything that would threaten their regime. And like you mentioned, uh, again, the U.S. intel have been uh, warning these embassies, and they've also been warning their own citizens, saying that there could be possible terror attacks. Do you think the same logic would apply, that uh, in order to avoid a direct confrontation, this might be less likely, even though still something, of course, to be wary about? I think Iran uh, is going to do exactly react exactly as it reacted to Qasem Soleimani's death, which is it's, it took its time. And if we saw what happened, Iran pushed its envelope so far that it actually went after U.S. officials in the United States, and it has not resulted in any uh, particularly um, uh, uh, threatening measure from the U.S. to Iran. So as long as Iran feels that the international response is not going to be deadly, as long as whatever they do ends up in just more sanctions that Iran can r ignore or some sort of, a, you know, uh, strong statements and uh, very limited measures, they will continue expanding their operations and trying, um, and trying to uh, cause problems, which may include significant um, terrorist attacks. Most likely, those terrorist attacks will be, for now, limited to Israel and Jewish targets in Europe or other parts of the world. Uh, but Iran has succeeded in those things in the past. We, uh, it took, um, since 1994 until now, for the Argentine uh, courts to finally rule that Iran and Hezbollah were behind the Israeli embassy and AMIA bombings there. So if Iran were to do something like that in some other country um, now, I don't see that it would make uh, a big difference. I don't see a huge military response against Iran directly. As a result, I think there would be a very strong consensus among uh, US, UK and others to downplay um, and limit the response be precisely because um, these countries have been bending over backwards to avoid escalation. In fact, possibly a controlled escalation could in, could in fact deter and uh, limit some of these expanding activities, uh, which is becoming harder and harder to control and prevent. Right. It does sound like it's a very dire situation also in this region. But thank you so much for breaking this down for us. Really appreciate you being here. And thanks again. Appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate it.